You know, I, I talked about this quite a bit uh, when I reviewed Impact and when I reviewed my experience at Snake Eyes and Hard to Kill. But one thing that I've been waiting for is for them to double down on their guys and on their girls. You can't say you have the best women's division in wrestling and then bring in, we'll say for sake of argument, part-timers, and they come and beat the entire roster and leave. You're not establishing your division. You know, kind of similar with the X division. They've they've brought people in, the Leo Rushes, and they come in and they they win the belt. And they beat the people who are signed that we're supposed that we're gonna tune in to every week for. And we've seen the Ace Austins and the Chris Bays, which well, although they're doing excellent in the tag division and did well in the X division, like they never they never kind of got to that main ele- main event level that I think a lot of us were hoping for. You know, Jake something didn't quite take that next step. My guy Rohit Raju, we were we were waiting on that. Um people were real stagnant. And they would come in and and you know, guys would come in for a set of tapings and, and you know, everyone would do the job for them and just everyone stayed in place. Everyone was extremely stagnant. And really what I'm feeling off um, the right now, what they're doing is that it's finally time for them to say, hey, we've got to get this wrestler from point A to point B. This sixth way that Jake something won, impact wrestling a year ago, Kushida would have won that. Because he was the kind of shiny new toy. Or even if he wasn't signed, if he was just, he came in, because he, you know, there's times he came in and just did, uh, you know, they book him for a few sets of tapings. He'd come in and pretty much beat everyone. I mean, he was in the world title match at uh, Rebellion last year. I believe it was the Rebellion show. But now I, I just I don't get that vibe anymore. And this is this was something that, you know, we've been having conversation about a lot of us fans. Was that in this new era, is it going to be how many new people can we bring in? Or is it the people that want to be here? We're going to make them the stars. That's why I'm I'm, I'm for years critical about this. YouTube strategy that, you know, I get into arguments all the time with people. I've lost followers and subscribers over it, countless about highlighting guys who want nothing to do with you right now. You know, I, you know, I remember once upon a time after AJ Styles debuted at the Royal Rumble, what, what did TNA do? They released the best of AJ Styles DVD right after that. And then Bobby Roode signs with NXT, and they release the best of Bobby Roode. And then Eric Young, I mean, it just goes on and on. And it it reminds me of, for anyone who is close to my age, I'm 44, and, and listens to hip-hop, uh, there was Death Row Records, right? Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, Tupac, The Dog Pound, The Lady of Rage. This was a, these were powerhouses. The label was a powerhouse. Everything they put out, you know, gold, platinum, double platinum, okay? They had a period where everyone left. Snoop left. Dre left. Dog Pound left. Tupac died. Okay, they lost everybody. So they came in with, you know, the the second dynasty, the new row. And they brought in, you know, guys, Crooked Eye, Eastwood, Spider Loke, uh, Lisa Left Eye Lopez, um, a, f- a few other names. Since they lost Dr. Dre, they bring in these new producers, uh, Darren Vegas, Jim Getta, Monster O, Ambassador Cash. I remember these days like it was yesterday. And, you know, the fans of the row were really excited for this next dynasty, and they were promising this is the new, the new death row. And, um, you know, Crook and I was the lead man, and they said this is the best – Best in the West, best rapper on the West Coast. But over the course of several years, all they did was release Tupac albums after Tupac passed away. 
I mean, there had to have been two or three double CDs. There's three I can think of on the top of my head. Uh, a couple of remix albums. And this new row never had a single album released. He did not put out one of them. And the, the point I'm making was, was that Suge Knight over at Death Row was unable to separate himself from what they used to do and who they used to have and just never trusted the new talent he brought in. Didn't even give him a chance. Not one album came out. Wasted years off these people's careers. And that's kind of where I felt like TNA was, was sitting. It was like they just wanted to read. That's why the Impact rebrand didn't work, because they wanted to, to remind you who they, how, who they used to have. And I don't, I'm not getting that vibe right now. Maybe, maybe that's going to change. Maybe the very first time that um, someone debuts and you, I, I, hold, they might post a Deanna Perrazzo video next week. You know what I'm saying? And kind of go back to go back to what they were doing. I don't, I, who knows? But right now, that's not the vibe I'm getting. That is not the 2024 vibe. At Hard to Kill, we thought we were going to get debuts up the ass, kind of like what they promised with Slammiversary several years ago when they rebranded uh, Global Force Wrestling. Jeff Jarrett came in, and they, they brought in all these guys. That's what we were thinking was going to happen. That's what a lot of us were expecting. You know, that's why I did the video, Who's who I think is going to be the big surprise, and I listed like six or seven people because I really thought – at least a couple of them are going to show up. And then I did a previous video where uh, talking about all the people released from WWE. I thought we were going to get a bunch of those there as well. But you have this is how you have to build a talent because the main event scene has been very thin for a while. And now they're, cha- they're, they're faced with the challenge of, okay, Alex Shelley was, I can't believe he was the third longest champion because he, felt like a transitional champion the entire time, but he was the third longest reigning champion, which is un- unreal to, to think about. I-, I can't believe EC3 didn't have a longer run than that. But anyway, now they face the challenge of how do we get Alex Shelley to remain in the world title picture and not bring him down to the tag team division or the X division? Like like what happened with Rich Swan, like what happened with you know Eric Young to an extent. Um. Even Moose had a bit of a fall from grace once he lost the world title. It just kind of seems like they don't know what to do. And EC3 is actually a great example. When Once EC3 lost the title and he was a babyface for a while, it worked until he never got the title back. And then all of a sudden, they didn't know what to do with him. And he was the grand champion, and they, they had him taking losses in Mexico, and it was a complete mess. But now they want these guys to be the household names and yeah we're gonna see some new people we're gonna bring see see, see some debuts because we gotta see fresh face fresh excuse me fresh faces and i i'm guilty of wanting more people on the roster i think everyone kind of does but if you really think about it they have a good balanced roster a good sized roster because you see the problems a- aew has where they're just signing and signing and signing and and now there's Nothing you can sink your teeth into watching the show. And it's a shit show over there. And uh, NWA, which is the program, you know, the, the, the show that I watch second after TNA. They're in a similar boat as Impact where they're a smaller company. They're a much smaller company, but they're a smaller company. But they have like 80 people. If you, if you look at their roster online, it's like 70, 80 people. And every time you watch an episode, they do have their core, but there's always, always, it does not fail. There's one name on those graphics where he said, who the fuck is that? It does not fail. So that's a company that they're almost making the AEW mistake, in my opinion, to where they're kind of, they kind of have too many people on the roster. And a lot of them really shouldn't be on the, on the roster period. So I think Impact is the, or excuse me, TNA is the, the company that has the right balance It's just a matter of how can we get some of these guys that have been around or a little lower in the card, how do we get them to that next level? You know what I mean? They've tried with a couple people, the the to watch one to watch award, one to watch for, whatever they call it, Willie Mack, Bupinder, the most cursed award in impact history. It's gonna take me a while to stop saying impact. 
So I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited too, because it just seems that's the direction that they're going. And yeah, we want to see some fresh people. Absolutely. But I think we can all agree that doing something with who they have right now and making them important and stand out and uh, become more household names should be the real focus this year. 